and uh, you were sharing about Isha Foundation's groundwork that you're doing with children because children are our future tomorrow and to I would want you to share what you have told me about the teaching that you were training the children to the audience because I think that's brilliant uh, what you were sharing. Can you please repeat that, Guruji, about the work Isha Foundation is doing in educating the children? So when we say education, what is the purpose of the education that we're doing? At different stages, of evolution of a culture or a nation, we need to educate people differently. Suppose we were at continuous war, we would be training our youth to fight. Right now we are in an economic pit and we see a possibility, right now we are talking about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship everywhere. So like this at different times, we need to train them for different things. Having said that, we know that sixty-five to seventy percent of the Indian population is in rural India. I don't know what images people who live in cities have about rural India, but it's a pathetic life today. It's not a peaceful countryside living, it's bad, okay? Nourishment is bad, infrastructure is bad, everything is bad. Life in rural India is no more that idyllic, poetic stuff, it is not. Because we try to shift from what is called a subsistence farming to commercial farming, it should have been done in a planned way, in a time-bound manner. We have this problem about not having timelines for anything. Whatever it is, we don't have timelines, we think we can do it eternally. We don't plan. No? Huh? We don't plan, focused planning <laughs> <laughs> They're having the clock ticking <laughs> no, There's no timelines. When… when is this job going to be complete? We think we can do… Be, see, we're talking about being a developing country. We're developing, developing, developing. Tell us when will we be developed country? If we are developing, at some point we must become developed, isn't it? Is there a target timeline? Okay, by this year, we plan to be a developed country and these are the goals. There is no such thing, we are going on developing. Like this agriculture moving from subsistence to cash farming, it should have been done in a planned, time-bound way. We just let it be like that. So these people who had one acre, two acres, three acres of land, they were growing what they need on their land and they were eating well. They had no money, they were in rags, they had no drinking water, no electricity, but they were robust. A village person means he was robust. Today you go into the village, they have drinking water, they have electricity. Some villages still don't have, but largely they have. Everybody has a cell phone, they have internet kiosks. But you will see sixty percent of the rural population in India has shrunk like this, their skeletal system has not grown to full size because they're malnourished. When they were eating food grown on their land, they ate variety of things. Today he's growing sugar cane, he gets cash in his hand, he comes and watches your cinema <laughs> or gets drunk. <laughs> not wrong, I'm saying that's the only entertainment he has, let him watch <laughs> There's nothing else in his life, either a cricket match or a cinema or drink. There's really nothing else. I mean, what, is, what else is there in the village? A cricket match or a cinema or drink, these are the only three things which make it worthwhile living for him. <laughs> Otherwise, everything is dreary, hard work, no result. When we did agriculture as subsistence farming, they… if we… today we are plowing means there is a plowing song, to tomorrow we are uh, weeding means weeding song, planting means planting song, like this there were harvest means harvest songs and dance. There was a community, with that they were doing agriculture. Today you go into the village, two two acres are all barbed wire fenced, my land is my land, your land is your land, I won't let you step into my land and I… you… I can't step into your land. You can't run agriculture like this for this kind of population, 
it needs a community, it needs a certain joy, it needs a certain involvement and relationship. You just want to do commercial thing, then you should have done something else. You should have merged everybody's lands and run big farms. Unless your land tract is large enough, there is no way to make agriculture profitable. There is no way. And if it's large enough, you need a community. Today everybody comes and plows in my land, tomorrow all of us go, go and plow in your land. This is how things were happening. Now for everything I have to pay money, when I pay everything, in the end all I have is debt. So the education for them is only to get out of this economic pit. So at six, they will start English language and computers. Within one year, all of them are speaking fluent English in our schools. Sixty percent of them are going to school, this is the first generation going to school, but they are fluently speaking in English, you should see the joy in the parents' faces because they think their children have been to another planet. <laughs> they come home and they start talking in English <laughs> It's an unbelievable scene, it's something that you must see, tears will come to you if you enter the school. That is one form of schooling where mainly towards employment, mainly towards moving them out of that situation. Another form of education is we have Isha Home School, which is uh, for the affluent, which is run by highly trained volunteer teachers. And this is a household kind of school where every twenty children live with a committed couple who bring them up till from age of six to a certain point. All schooling happens largely in the home except for labs, playgrounds and libraries. From eighth standard, they move to the high school, which is there. Our eleventh and twelfth is not two years, we made it three years because we are bringing so much talent into them in terms of music, art, theater, leadership, business, various aspects, so that when they step out into their undergrad, they are very mature and competent people. So I said one year extra, if you want to do schooling with us, it is not twelve years, it is thirteen years. So you cross the bad number also. <laughs> <laughs> it's really brilliant. Really and brilliant. another form of education is where there is no academics, these children come at six and they have to commit for twelve years stay. Here we teach only yoga, Kalari Paitu, classical music, classical dance, Sanskrit language and English language. This is focused just to build the human body and the human brain to its fullest capability without any intent. It's the most stupid thing is asking a three-year-old child, what will you become, what will you become? I want to be a doctor at the age of three <laughs> So without thinking what I will become, just growing this body and growing this brain to the fullest capability with utmost balance. You will see these children, if you come and see them, they can sit like this unmoving for five, six hours, okay? Wow. Age of twelve, fifteen years of age, wow. they will simply sit like this unmoving for five, six hours at a time. Wow. That's a level of stability we brought into them. Wow. <laughs> I… Guruji… Actually, Most adults cannot do it. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, forget five, six hours, I think for one minute is also difficult. <laughs> Two minutes is difficult. Uh, hey, uh, one minute is a bad case. 